and welcome back to Seconds Out. My name is Eamon Khan here with the one and only Tunde Ajayi. Pleasure to speak to you, sir. Doing a bit of shadow boxing. How you doing? How you doing? Yeah, you know, like the, the, the bones ain't moving as quick as when it <laughs> you say, how you doing, sir? Good to see you. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, all the better to speak to you. We've just seen Joel Kadua in the ring doing the pads. Talk to me about Joel, a fighter that maybe myself and others might not know too much about, but um, what do you see in, in Joel? Well, I'm glad you don't know too much about him because uh, it's the way I really do things. I really, you know, I, I don't believe in hyping up young fighters uh, at this stage of their career. Um, for me, it's always about the winning, keep winning, keep developing. And we'll see an improvement from his first fight. You know, he's getting used to having these bright lights around him. It's such a blessing to have him fighting on such a uh, gigantic uh, card this Saturday. And I'm happy for him. And I think that um, he's going to put on a great performance and continue his, his march. When fighters come to you um, and ask you to guide them and train them, what's the one specific asset of, above all that you look for in the fight to say, hey, that's something I can work with? Ethic, discipline. Concentration. You gotta love this sport 100 percent If your mind is rounded up to hundred percent, ninety-five percent must be boxing every day. It's got it's gotta be the thing that occupies your mind. So uh, it's hard to really assess that when you just see a kid looking good, you know. Um, but Joe has been around us for many years. He's been a, it take me it took me a long time to really accept him into the camp. I'm a the acceptance was based on the fact that he just kept on coming back. He showed the ethic, and so that's what I love. That's what I always look for. I haven't seen too many of them over the years because, you know, it, it's, life is, is testing. Uh, but I always say, if there's a will, there's a way, and you will find yourself in the gym and you will keep working at it each and every day. A man to your right, I'm sure you'll say, will have those qualities as well as Anthony Yard. Look, you put in a, a tremendous effort against Art of A lot of people are waiting, can't wait to see him back in the ring. Styling and profiling behind you is Anthony Yard. But look, um, how, how far away is he from returning back to the ring? Yeah, Anthony's back, man. Anthony's back. It's just, it's so wonderful for me because, you know, you know, the second time we've come up a little bit short. And I'm telling you, no word of a lie, each time this boy comes back in the gym, even after the first half a loss, is that, come on, we ain't changing nothing. Let's keep going, keep going, keep, because that's my spirit, you know? Um, and after every lesson, it just amazes me. Like, even Joe was like, Unks, it don't make sense. Like, how's he just come in the gym and he's punching harder, he's moving faster? He said, and I was like, that's experience. That's experience. That's someone experiencing boxing at the highest level and, and using that experience to his further growth. That's what Anthony's done, and it's so good to have him smiling, moving, punching. My elbows are killing me. <laughs> My wrists are killing me. And uh, it just shows, it just shows. Johnny Nelson said years ago that you, you can't buy, borrow, or pretend to have experience. I think he learned that from his mentor, Brendan Ingle. And uh, for the first time, one million percent. I know that. I never just heard it. I know that. And he's gonna. Well, <laughs> yeah. I feel sorry for anyone who's fighting and next because it's gonna be a problem. It's gonna be a problem. Do you get that feeling that there was definitely that respect from the boxing wider public to Anthony to yourself? And it's a cliche, but I'll say it nonetheless. But the whole team as a whole, the stock's risen even in defeat. Oh, absolutely. Because remember, where where the I'm not gonna say black sheep. But we're the guys who really done things in a different way to most boxing people. You know, I, I've, I've come from no formal boxing learning. You know, I developed a system of boxing and I've stuck with it. Anthony also had limited amateur career, 12 amateur fights, and he stuck with it. He's, he's believed in me. He's believed in himself. And um, I think people are just, you need great fights to get great acceptance. Anthony done it the first time round. And he's done it again, you know? And uh, you can't lie to the boxing fans and the general public. People, are, are, like, we walk down the street in any area, any area. Hey, what, hey, what? Mad respect for you, but bruv, bruv, you are a warrior. You are the, you understand what I'm saying? And me, you gotta understand how that makes me feel. 
because I've walked this journey with Anthony from the start. And I'm again, I'm so happy to see him get it. And don't, when I say I'm happy, I don't want no one to, online to get it twisted. Like we're hungry, bro. We're like we want, we want all the success, you know, uh, that comes with the hard work. And uh, we will get it. Anthony has been very blessed uh, thus far in his career. And uh, so was I, you know, he changed the view outside of my window. Um, and uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. He will be world champion, one million percent. Well, the rumour is next he might be taking on Joe Smith Jr. If that is the case, give me the scout report on him. Good fighter in prospect. And where do you feel Anthony has the edges over him, if that is the fight? Well, Joe's a great fighter. You know, listen, he, he's knocked out a former world champion in uh, Elder Alvarez. Um, he's a good fighter. <laughs> and I think that sometimes you can look at, you know, lost, only lost to the best, lost to Bivol, um, lost to Better Be Ever, we was there ringside. And so he's a good fighter. And again, when you get to this level, anyone knows that you don't overlook or underestimate any fighter at this level. You can look on the TV screen and say, ah, he don't look that good, but he's, he's done something. <laughs> I know he's cracking a joke about me, or something. But um, it's a fight that, if happens, I fully expect and to be explosive in that fight. Because Andy's a man who, you know, he won't be denied. It's his dream, it's his destiny, my dream and my destiny. Um, and together, I feel that anyone who steps in our way is going to be in for a great fight. The light heavyweight scene in this country is very much thriving. Watsi's back in the mix now. Dan Aziz has been rising, rising, rising. A rise that you've called um, uh, very early in that stage. Um, who's also now calling to maybe fight your fight anti yard. It feels like these fights um, hopefully will happen in the future. Does starting with Watsi? Does um, Watsi moving over to boxer maybe free up and open the possibility of those two locking horns now that the cross promotional deal might be more likelier because of the move? Listen, these are all London boys. He, as you just said, I think it's fantastic that four London fighters are now in the Ring Magazine ratings top 10. That's incredible. Obviously, you've got the top dog, Anthony Yard, the top of the London boys at number six. You've got Boatsy at number seven, Dan at number eight, and Craig Richards, the dark horse at number nine. And I keep saying Craig is a dark horse because Craig is developing day by day. Dan is developing day by day. And so is Anthony, and, and, and when JB gets back on the, uh, on the road, him. So I just think that these are all great fights um, and a great possibility of them happening. But I think all these boys have got world ambitions. They want that world title, so who knows? If Better Be Ev moves forward, because how long is, does he want to carry on if he's not getting that unification fight? Because that's what he wants. He wants the unification fight. Um, a rematch with Ant. I know Ant wants that. Um, but then you have a situation now where these London boys are all in the rankings. I think Anthony's in the WBC, he's in the IBF, he's in the WBO. We're all ranked fighters. Um, but yeah, Anthony's the number one. Callum Smith now is the challenger for Arta Baturbi. I was speaking to Anthony. Anthony said, look, I feel I've taken something out of uh, Arthur Baturbiev, definitely. And there, there's a feeling online maybe that from some people, some pundits, that Callum Smith's got a, a good chance here because maybe they've seen Baturbiev slow and maybe they've seen how it's him having something taken out of him. What do you rate of Callum's chances of dethroning Arthur Baturbiev? Look, Callum's a former unified champion uh, at Super Middle. Uh, came up short against um, Canelo Alvarez. But the kid can punch and the kid has got a good boxing IQ. Sorry, he's not a kid. I don't like... See, that's what I'm saying. He's hang around people, the boxing fraternity too long. He start calling people. He's a young man uh, with a lot of talent and a lot of skills and a, a lot of composure. I am of the opinion of Anthony Yard that Ant has taken something out of Better Be Earth. Same thing he took out of Kovalev before Kovalev got stopped by Canelo Alvarez. These fights have their toll on older fighters, you know? And so it'd be interesting to see the recovery of Better Be Ev. But what a fighter that guy is. So Callum Smith, he, you know, Better Be Ev is not no Canelo. 
Babe is not good. He, this man is, it's the mindset, it's the mental, what I found the most interesting about Betty because I'm like, no one can't beat us mentally, you know, but there comes a point in a fight where a coach and a trainer has to say, all right, and the fighter has to say, well, not the fighter, because the fighter will go out on his shield. They just have to say to themselves, all right, you know what, tonight you're the better man, we'll come again. And that's how it was for us on that night. So with Cal where Callum's concerned, is it a case of him just getting a fight at the right time? Or is it a case of Betty Rev is going to continue this, this unbeaten, uh, the man himself, <laughs> uh, unbeaten uh, wrecking machine of a, a KO percentage? Uh, it'd be interesting. But I'm going with the whole man. I'm going with Callum Smith. I, I, I fancy him to cause a, a little upset there in that fight if it happens. Very interesting pick. We'll see it come to fruition uh, or, or not potentially. I want to get your thoughts on a couple of other things, Tunde. You've been in the game a lot longer than I have. That goes without saying. But were you as shocked and maybe disappointed as I was uh, seeing Amir Khan testing positive for taking a performance in substance? He says it was uh, unintentional, but um, shock and disappointment there for a lot of people in the boxing circle. Look, Amir is an ambassador for British boxing. Always has been. And uh, I tend not to look at the negativity or the negative side of, of anything to do with boxing. Uh, but I tweeted it this morning, I took it off because, again, Twitter is a, is a horrible place. You say something and you know there's negativity always flying about, but I'm kind of baffled. I, I heard UCAD made a statement clearing Amir, saying that the traces were so low and insignificant um, and they've given that pardon. But I'm like, so why can't they do that for Conor Ben? If Conor Ben's traces were so small and insignificant, why hasn't there been this big public apology for Conor Ben? Because from what I understand, it was only traces found in Conor Ben's uh, samples. So I just, that's what I'm not, maybe, maybe I, I, I've misread the script a little bit. You know, but if these two young men have been found with just traces, of, of illegal substances in their crowd, chase it, uh, in their system, traces where it wouldn't really affect the performance of the individual um, that much, then I just think that Connor should be getting that as well. Um, and Amir, you know, it was a big shock. It was a big shock for, for everybody, but apparently he's cleared his, you know, you kind of cleared him. And so I'm happy about that. And I'm uh, just happy that, uh, the sport of boxing isn't going to be dragged through the mud. It's not good for the, for, the, for our sport, these drug allegations, because, uh, you know, me, Anthony, clean fighters, um, it's like, well, sometimes you think there's a world. Are, are we even competing on a level playing ground? You know, these guys taking, pumping themselves with drugs and taking tablets and all that, like, it, it upsets me a lot. I'm like, this, hard, this sport is hard enough without people cheating. And you know, it ain't cricket, <laughs> this ain't croquet, uh, one of them, or dominoes, <laughs> like they play on ends. You know, this is a, it's a sport where the sole intention is to render your opponent unconscious. So you're telling me I'm going through all of this for you to take some drugs to enhance that? Nah, that ain't right. That is totally wrong and um, I'm glad Amir has been cleared, or his name has been cleared. But I want the same treatment for Conor Ben. Clear him as well. If you can't prove nothing, clear his name. Reinstate him in all the rankings um, and everything. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not. Was not. Well, it's not this uh, good for the goose, good for the gander business. Like it's we want level playing field here. So yeah, sorry. So. <laughs> so yeah. So anyway, no drugs. No place in boxing for drugs. And uh, that's what I was saying. That. Yeah, I'll end with two couple of final positive things. First yes. of all, good fighting prospect on the main event of this, Joyce versus Zhang. What do you think? Fantastic fight. You know I'm going with Joloff Joe. That's what I've named him. I don't know about no juggernaut. I'm claiming to the Nigerian aspect. So we call him Joloff Rash is the dish. So Joloff Joe Joyce. But I was in the, the lift yesterday with uh, Mr. Zhang. And like the lift was all quiet because you know he's quite an imposing figure. <laughs> 
<laughs> and so everyone was like looking at the floor and everybody like, and I, I, t- I nudged him I said yeah big up Chinese power the whole lift started cra- cracking up laughing the Chinese power so Chinese power against Jollof Joe, Jollof Joe tomorrow um, or Saturday night and it's going to be a great fight but it's going to take something very very incredible to beat Joe Joyce at this stage of his career I just think that he's the most feared heavyweight I wouldn't put maybe Tyson Fury I wouldn't put him in that mix but amongst most people Joe is the kind of work that you rather just skip and just fight him if you just need to fight him because he's a monster Um, someone who throws an enormous amount of punches consistently from round 1 to 12 and for a big guy in this day and age that's a problem Uh, Zhang very very strange as well you know you don't usually get southpaw heavyweights uh, that can move I can feel, think of a few in the past Chris Bird and they were, they were small guys but you know a guy of that size from China um, and being a, a lefty and a skilled lefty as well got good skill set but I just think when all said and done Joe Joyce will overcome him somewhere in the between 8 and 10 there's a feeling, just to add on to that, there's a feeling that, look, if Joyce and Joshua to square off, the, the favourites would change. A few years back, you'd fancy Joshua as maybe the favourite. Now people are fancying Joyce. Do you subscribe to that way of thinking? Um, you may be right. The people may be right. I, I haven't really looked at it like that. You know, listen, mentality plays a great part in this sport. And sometimes when you've beaten someone, even if it's from the amateurs, taking that into the pro, that gives you that mental confidence that you need. Uh, but I would say that they are at two different stages. AJ's been the boss for so long that it's all about him getting that mental fire back uh, in his stomach to really go out there and take these guys out. This is, this is what I was saying. AJ don't need a technical trainer. AJ needs someone to relight the fire inside of him. Words, the mental aspect of the game. You cannot teach a a, an Olympic gold medalist, a two-time WBA, WBO, uh, and the rest of the belts champion, how to start boxing. It's gone past that. You need that hype man. You need the man that's going to say, come, let's go, let's rock it out. Let's do that, that. And as mad as that sounds, you know, I call it roadman science. As mad as that sounds, that's the only way you're going to get that Anthony Joshua back. Because if you start teaching him to box, how are you going to put Anthony Joshua in a ring with Tyson Fury, who's a master boxer? It ain't going to work. You've got to stick it on him. That like you got to stick it. I'm not giving away game plans or anything, but you got to stick it on him. And you know, I saw some footage of AJ training years ago with a certain trainer. Don't want to call his name out, uh, but he sent me the tapes, and I was like, "That is awesome." And uh, if we can get that fire back, AJ is going to be a problem for anyone, including Joe Joyce. But Joe Joyce, the momentum is with Joe Joyce at the moment. My final request is a prediction from you. A huge fight coming up next weekend. Javonta Davis versus Ryan Garcia. Where do you stand right now and who is the winner of that massive fight? <sighs> it's one of those ones, isn't it? Like, you, like, I think the betting, if he was a better man, you would have to say Tank Davis. But there's something about this Ryan Garcia. <laughs> I don't know. There's something about it. I'm not too sure. Like, like, when I say I'm not too sure, I'm like, this guy's got supreme confidence. Uh, he's got. He's obviously got the punch. He's got the look. He's got the followers. He's got the speed. Uh, does he have the same boxing IQ as Tank? Who knows? He had over 200 amateur fights, so he's no slouch. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say tank, uh, tank. Uh, I'm gonna say tank. Uh, mid to late rounds stoppage. Mid to late rounds. If tank catches him clean once, it's good night, nurse. If Garcia catches tank to the body early, that the game could change. Um, but yeah, if I was a better man, which I'm not, I would say tank. Tunde, a real pleasure speaking to you. Looking forward to seeing your fighter in action this weekend and return to Anti-Yard very soon. Thanks so much for speaking to Seconds Out, sir. Much appreciated.